Hello folks, thanks for taking a look at today's blog. Uh, the subject today is going to be fasteners and fastener type systems. Uh, so I'm going to go through some scenarios that you may see uh, with some uh, parts here. we got some uh, slotted type systems, some holes uh, with a pattern. So we're going to go through and create uh, probably a typical scenario that you would see, uh, which would be somebody going out and to a, a fastener type library, uh, either purchased or uh, a third party uh, purchased, because uh, we do have one through Siemens, it's an add-on. Uh, of course, it comes with premium, but if you have the uh, lower versions, classic and uh, foundation, you can add this to it. Uh, it's a million part library where it goes through uh, and uh, different types of uh, fasteners, structural shapes, flanges, etc. So let me go through and first off, let's create some holes for this bottom part that we have. Uh, a couple different ways. We can either create an assembly feature as a cut or a hole, uh, or we can actually just use the uh, peer location of the hole from the the, uh, the part from the top level. Uh, I can just do um, include some areas here. So let's just include and just grab some edges here. There we go. That. So I have my regions. Uh, I can now cut those through, cut out. Uh, let's just go and do that. Obviously, you see I don't have certain things in, in, in the sheet metal command. I'm looking for a single selection. So I can switch over to uh, part level. And uh, I can do a cut out here. And oh, don't want to do that in synchronous. I can do it in synchronous will work. I can grab my whole or the actual cutouts right now. And populate those through there. So get them all. I got them all. That looks pretty good. Uh, we can we can move things to synchronous to recognize them. So if I wanted to actually move those to synchronous, I can do that. Uh, then I can actually just recognize those as actual holes. So we're back in sheet metal. It's going to go through and find that uh, cutouts that I just did. And now I can tell out what type. Just use the general clearance, just like the top holes for a half inch. And that actually turns those into intelligent holes. All right, so those cutouts that were previously just dumb features are now intelligent holes. All right, so again, I could either have done that from the assembly, because we do have the ability to recognize holes from the assembly level on parts, uh, or you can just do it from the part level, whichever is the easiest for us. So, all right, I'm going to go grab some half-inch fasteners from our library. Start it up. So let me take a look at what's in our library. So we've got a, several million parts in here. If you, if you load every standard, which I don't recommend, uh, typically you're just going to load the ANSI and maybe a few metric templates. So let's go ahead and place a set of bolts on this hole right here. Right, so let's go find a bolt first. I know that's a half inch for a, a for a fat made for a half inch hole. So let me go through and find half inch UNC. Uh, let's just start with a one inch and see if that'll work. And I'll go ahead and just place. All right. So our fastener system uh, library is intelligent to know that it needs some intelligence, or excuse, it needs some uh, locations. Uh, to create relationships with, pardon me. Uh, so it looks for a face first off, so I'm going to say that face and that hole. All right, so every single one of these has the same type of intelligence built into it called capture fit. So now let me go grab a washer. I'm going to grab a lock washer, half inch. And place it. So the capture fit is on that one too with intelligence. And just tell it the face and the diameter to amount to, and lastly uh, a nut to go on there. And close that one. So if it hasn't been created before, it will actually go and make the, the part the first time. 
but the second time you use it, it automatically just pop populates. Oh. I know what I grabbed there. That is definitely not a half inch. Oh, there's one and a half inch. But I'll close the cover and close it up. Quarter, half inch, you can see. Yeah, that's more like it. And there we go. So that can finishes the stack up. All right, so that's one way to actually create a stack system. And then I can actually create a pattern, pattern this wrap, or just a couple of holes like in this views, uh, you know, just copy paste these back into there uh, once I'm done. All right, so let's look at uh, another way to create a set of uh, bolts and nuts and washers in a hole. Uh, we have something called fastener system inside a solid edge, and it again, it's tied to our standard parts, so it has to be loaded for this to work. So what we're going to do, uh, this kind of speeds things up, so I can say look for all bolts on the face, so if I highlight that, it's going to go and try to put bolts in every single hole. Uh, maybe you don't necessarily need uh, all those on all of them. You, know, you can just go by uh, single hole, so if you wanted to go and just put this in maybe these three, and set that, then it's going to ask for a bottom hole depth. So I'm going to pick the bottom edge of this inside face, and it's going to go query the library. It's going to go find the standard parts that will actually fit uh, that size, and I think one size down from that. First thing it's going to do is uh, ask me for the actual type of bolt component. I'll just go with the same size that I did on the previous one, a half inch 13, and I'll say add that fastener. And I typically want to say user defined. I believe I made the, that one one. Uh, let's make these one and a quarter inch long, and that will work for the bolt. Uh, so for the bottom stack, uh, I did put a lock washer, so again, we can go follow the same type. I can uh, go grab a steel go spring half inch lock washer. Add that into it. And lastly, we need a plain nut. So hex nut, half inch, half faster, and preview and assembly. All right, again, so this one and a quarter. Half, half I want to, hasn't been created yet, so it's going to go out and do that. I may have used a different nut there. I guess I used a different uh, hex. I looked up a smaller head, hex head bolt. All right, so what it does, you can preview it, and you can see if it, uh, if you got the right bolt extension. If you don't like it, you can always go back into there and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and just make that match to the previous one. Set that back to one inch. Preview and assembly. And once you get the same look that you kind of want, there we go. And we'll just say okay. And once you say okay, it'll go populate the other ones that you went and already told to select from. All right, so that is fastener system. All right, so again, you can either out your library, drag your parts in, use relationships to place them, part place them from our standard parts, which is a little faster way to do it. Uh, but second, you know, the third way is using this the fastener system. So I'm going to go ahead and show you another way that you may not know about. Uh, it's called the system library. Uh, so this would be a good scenario for a system library. So we have a series of slots. Used to do this a lot, uh, putting U-shaped troughs together. Uh, lots of fasteners, and these were kind of a pain to draw. Uh, now with uh, pattern by curve, very easy. And I'll go ahead and pattern this, show you, put the rest of the bolts in there, uh, and show you how to create a, a curve along here. So what we're going to do is uh, place, uh, let's try, first off, let's try the, the way we just did it with our fastener system. So 
trouble is a slot, these are actually created with our slot command. But our fastener system does not recognize these edges as holes, so it's not going to go find any bolts that will fit that. All right, so what do we do in this scenario? Well, again, we can see what size this is. So that looks uh, a 0.9 diameter. Uh, so we can go with this, I guess, 7 8 bolt. All right, let's go and do that. So again, we go to our library, our bolts. And again, use the type of relationship. So slots, so if I find the diameter of the bolt and pick that slot, notice by using a quick pick, it finds the actual slot axis. So it will center that for me in that uh, actual hole. So it, uh, by default, will actually find this in the slot. So, um, what I want to do is, again, I could go through and just place relationships on it like I showed you, or I could actually create a system library. All right. I'm going to go ahead and create a little stack up for myself here. Uh, I have, again, I'm going to go out to my library and go grab some parts. So let's go ahead and go to washers first. So kind of categorize these how you would typically want to categorize folders. So I'm going to go ahead and make an assembly of this one time. So we have a washer. We'll go with a two inch bolt. And the trick for a system library is you want to just basically use relationships of the part. So the first part I use was washer face to this part in the center of this to the center hole. So that's really the only one I want to use the center hole on. Right, so the bolt itself, I just want to use the washer itself. So, so for example, if I turn that off, axial to the axis of the washer and its face underneath to the face of the washer. Uh, of course, I could actually lock rotation if I wanted to, uh, so it's, it's quickly fixed. So that's kind of what you want to do. I do need it on to do the lock washer, so I'm going to go and grab my own lock washer now. All right, so again, I'm going to use this face and this hole. There we go. And lastly, I'm going to do the nut. And the same scenario, off of this face, off of its axis. Turn everything on. All right, so. What you'd probably want to do is go through and notice I have different sizes here. You could just create a dummy master file and put all the different uh, size. So I got like a seven eighths, one inch, one and a quarter inch, and just create a system library uh, just from this one master file. And just keep adding if you need to create another system library. All right, so what is this going to do? For me? Right, so I'm going to hide this. Uh, I really don't need to see these either. So to create a system library, start the command. Go ahead and save it first. Got my files in there. System library. So it's going to say click the components that you want to use in the system. So I want the washer, the lock washer, the bolt, and the nut. There we go. Accept that. And no available features to copy. Uh, system libraries will allow you to copy the hole that that goes in. Uh, but typically I find I, I'm putting the holes in the parts before I even get to the fastener step. So typically I'm not doing it at the same time. So the hole is not really needed. So I'll go ahead and say next. So it's going to go through and actually look at these relationships. So the first thing it's going to look for is the face to mount that washer tube and the axis to mount the washer tube. And the last one is going to look through and look for the face for that lock or the lock washer in its axis. So I'll say OK. All right, then we'll want to say create. And this is where we give it a name. So I'm just going to call this um, 7 underscore 8 UNC and save it to, I'll save it to the same location. We'll just use an assembly. 
template to create it with. Let me make sure I'm going in my right location. Master System Library. And say OK. And say, all right, so that was it. It actually created the system library. So let's go back into this slot. Now let's go grab that system library. So I'll go to that system library folder. So there is the system library. That's right. That's not. Did I not finish? Try that again. So then eight and C. Some of the templates. May have uh, screwed up the path location. Masters, system libraries. There we go. Right, so call this. Sorry, I think my link, I, I had a wrong path in there. And okay. I think that did it. So let's go back into there. There we go, 7, 8, uh, UNC. So I created the library that time. It was the, it was the incorrect path that I was using. So if I drag that in, all right, so it's kind of like that capture fit intelligence, except it's dealing with multiple parts now as opposed to just individual parts. Uh, so what it's asking me is a face to pick. I want to say I want that face, what axis to go into. Uh, again, I'm going to hover over that and get my uh, slot axis. goes to the center. So now it's asking me for, hey, what face do you want that lock washer to go on? So that would be his back face. And again, let's go ahead and just use that to finish it off. There we go. So it places it in there and creates a, kind of a stack up for you. Notice it didn't leave that, uh, it didn't leave the system library as a library. It actually created them and dropped them at my top level. So now I have my correct build materials uh, layout, which show instead of having a subassembly of these parts, it would actually be uh, the correct quantity. All right, so that leads me to the next portion of system library. All right, because what I did on this part that I used is I created a family of libraries uh, of this part. So what does that mean? Well, that means is, uh, let's say we get uh, someone comes and says, we need to actually make this thicker. So maybe we need to add a gasket between them. So let me do that. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's replace. Uh, we don't want to replace that. Part. We want to replace it with a copy. We'll call it, call it gasket. And save. All right, so I got a flange and a gasket. So we need another flange on the opposite side. So I'll just use the synchronous tool well, not to rotate. Use it to copy and move that down here. Okay, let's place it in that location. There we go. So we have some kind of sandwich situation. Let's just change the color of the gasket just to make it 
a little easier to see. So let's turn our fastener system back on. All right, so we need to make this longer, and again, we just that that uh, actual washer is looking in the wrong location, so it's looking at the wrong face. Uh, so you know that that one's easy to fix. You can just edit, delete it, and just kind of recreate that relationship on that face. That moves that up, but then you say, well, that leaves this way too short. Uh, so what do we do here? Uh, well, what we need to do is replace that. So, again, I made a family of parts, so if I say replace that part, it's going to come up with the list of, all right, which part do you want to replace it with, the three inch or four inch? Well, let's try a three inch, that should work. Uh, so it's going to just basically replace that with a three inch version of it, and go on, you know, if, if my gasket ever changes thickness, So let's move it to. Oh, that's why I had it grounded. So I like that. Anyway, mess that up and try to show you that. Uh, anyway, that is using a system library to actually replace. I was also going to show you the ability to um, pattern that along a curve. All right, so let's create our curve. And I'm going to do that with a sketch. All right, so this is just a fast way, instead of having to recreate that on every single one, uh, we're just going to create a curve profile. out of the way. It's a little easier to see what I'm doing here. Uh, again, we want to tie this to some geometry, but you know this is not accurate. Again, we have to look under tools and turn on something called peers. So this is the assembly level peers. So we have access to the parts from the assembly level. Uh, so I can find, you know, common locations like the center of that. I'm going to go ahead and finish it off. That very carefully. So now let's put some relationships back on here. And the same thing for this. So I want to go ahead and make sure I start there and stay on center. Um, same thing for here. I want you to stay on center. And let's make sure this bottom edge stays in the center of this outside edge. So my profile turns black, means it's good to go. And so now I have a curve to pattern along. All right, so um, let me move back on just to see what I'm grabbing here. So I can now come along a pattern along curve, grab the parts that I want to pattern, and the nut and the washer. So I grab my curve, make sure I get the first point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten. I'm going to change the actual. Oh, I had the wrong count in there anyway. I need ten and not, as opposed to eight. That was my accident. I hit cancel. Well, let's change that quantity to ten. And then we go ahead and treat it. All right. So that's all great, uh, but you'd have to do that change that every single time. Just to show you that you can tie that together with the actual part pattern, uh, we can come over here to uh, do, look at our variables. All right, so I just created that assembly variable, which is uh, the 10, 10 hole pattern right here. Uh, we also have the pure variable of the actual flange, and there's the actual 10 count from there. So I can either drive it from the top level down or from the part level up. Uh, so if I just go ahead and just say I want to copy that link from the part, go to my variables at the top level, and go ahead and paste that link here. 
All right, so what does that mean? That means if we go back to the part level, or we can actually change it from the assembly using the pure variable. So I'll just go find that 10 and change that to 28. For that changes the number of slots, and of course, the number of slots now changes the number of bolts that go in those slots. All right, so that is system libraries, a little bit of family of parts, uh, fastener system, uh, and, and of course, our standard part library, uh, which again uh, comes with uh, premium but is an add on to classic and foundation. Uh, so, all levels of solid edge can use it. All right, so um, hopefully that shows you some things that you didn't know. And if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us at Swoosh Technologies. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, assist you and answer any questions you have. All right, thank you, folks.